Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and to a interesting video. So I've been asked a lot since I did my last State of the Collection video to do an update video. And since that I've done that last video, I've continued to buy some more higher end pieces and I also pretty much disappeared from YouTube for over a year while I got stuck in travel hell for work. And I've kind of lost track of, you know, the watch collection that I have going. This video has kind of forced me to fully realize how many watches I actually have and it's uh, a little frightening. Um, but anyway, I wanted to go ahead. I do read the comments that you guys want me to do a state of the collection. So here we go. These videos are actually extremely hard for me to shoot anymore because I don't keep all my watches on me at all times now. I, I've grown up a little bit and now I know better and I keep them locked up most of the time in safe places. So going out and finding all my watches and shooting them all for this video has actually been a little bit of a pain. But I did kind of want to go ahead and, you know, do a little catch up and show you guys what's going on with my collection. As you're gonna see, uh, it's quite extensive and I'm kind of just realizing that now. So I end up adding more watches to my collection because I have a habit of buying cars. <laughs> and I figured, you know, with watches that they don't depreciate as much as cars, by and large, they're cheaper to maintain and they don't take up as much space. So as you will see as I go through this collection, this collection basically took the place of me buying another Corvette or a Porsche. So. <laughs> My collection ranges quite a few different budget brackets, everything from 50 bucks to you know almost $10,000 and everything in between. So I am kind of eclectic in my taste and this video is gonna be so long that frankly, I can't shoot all my watches. I'm just gonna to try to top on the highlights of the ones that I wear frequently. And of those, there's about 14 watches that I typically have on my wrist at any given time. And I rotate them quite frequently. So right now I'm wearing my Breitling Navitimer for the customary wristwatch check. But again, this video is going to be long, so let's just go ahead and dive right into it. All right, so the first watch we're going to look at today is my Rolex Explore 2. This is the Rolex 16570, the Polar Explorer, as you guys hear it called. These things are starting to pick up in value, which is awesome, because when I was buying this watch two years ago, at least, I can't remember, these things were still in the high $3,000 range, and I just kept thinking, these things are crazy underpriced. And I still think today they're crazy into price because you're basically getting a Rolex GMT Master 2 without the bezel. It's the same movement, the Rolex in-house 3185 movement. It has a GMT hand on it, which is awesome. The hour hand can be set independently. I love that this watch is a sports watch from Rolex, but it has a white dial. And outside the Mielgau and the uh, Daytona, there's not really too many Rolex sports watches you can get with a white dial. I love the slim profile of this watch. I love that it's understated. I love that these are less common and you will see this watch on my wrist a lot. I just really, really enjoy this piece. And if you wanna learn more about it, I will post a link above to the review I did on this watch. And actually all the watches we're gonna look at today, I have reviewed on my channel and I will be showing you little cards above of the reviews for these watches. Some of the reviews are better than others. Moving on, we have my Rolex GMT Master II. This is gonna be model number 16710. I've had this watch three years, somewhere around that. I bought this watch before they were seeing crazy value spikes like they're seeing today. I bought this watch because as you guys may know, I'm just an aviation enthusiast and I love aviation history, especially the jet age. And the GMT Master II is a watch that has strong associations with Pan American Airways, um, particularly the Pepsi version, which has the blue instead of my Coke version, which has the red and black. That was the blue and red. I love this thing. It was again, something I bought just because of Love Aviation. And as it's worked out, these things have become pretty popular lately and uh, it's, it's gone up in value quite a bit. I actually prefer this watch to the Rolex Submariner. I love the thin profile case. I love all the benefits of the movement. Like I mentioned with the Explore 2, the great GMT hand, the ability to quick set the hour hand, which is awesome. Uh, I do like the bezel on this because it's cool, although I don't really use the 24 hour bezel that much. But again, I like the slimmer profile versus the Submariner and it's just a highly functional watch. And as I was kind of trapped flying all over the country last year, it was really great and convenient to have a watch like this that I could quick set the time on. So I'm gonna do another video on this real soon. I wanna to talk to you guys about why I actually think this is the best Rolex sports watch you can buy. In particular why I think it's way better than a Rolex Submariner. So stay tuned for that. So moving on, this is my Panerai Pam 287. This is a Radiomir. And I have always been a Panerai guy. However, I've always never <laughs> could bring myself to buy one. I thought they were kind of overpriced back in the ETA movement days. This one does have an ETA movement in it. I like them, but I, I always thought that they were way too popular and I didn't want to buy something everybody else had. It was only when the market for Panerai kind of turned down a little bit that I, I really got into these and bought one. I, I, I bought the Radiomir because while I love the Luminor, I like that the Radiomir was a little bit different and a little bit rarer. And I love this piece at 45 mil. 
It's a little hard to, to have on the wrist at times because it's so bulky, but it is, I love the timeless design. I love that 30s kind of Art Deco we look about it. I love the fact that it's Italian, um, as I've talked about a little bit on this channel, but not much. I'm basically Italian-German, and uh, my Italian family, I actually come from a very famous Italian family, which is one of the reasons I don't really like talking about myself on here, but having something that speaks to my Italian heritage, um, you know, Panerai is from Florence, I just, something very special about this watch, this watch, and I have a romance, and I, it's very hard to explain, but I love this piece, I love that it has a 7750 base movement, so it's easy to service and this is one I plan on keeping for the rest of my life. The next watch we're gonna talk about today is my Breitling Navitimer. This is, of course, the watch on my wrist right now. Uh, again, I'm an aviation guy. I love these things. Uh, going to air shows and seeing Lockheed Super Constellations flying around, especially the Breitling plane. I got sucked into it. I love these vintage aviation watches. I love old school aircraft, and the Navitimer is just a timeless piece. Mine is an A13322. I've actually had three, no, four Navitimers. I had a Montbrillant and I had uh, two of the generation after this, the A23322, I can't remember. They're all on my channel. I've had a lot of these things. The first three I had issues with. Fourth time's a charm in my case. So uh, again, another watch I've had multiple of. I just love these things. I love the 50s aesthetic. A lot of people think these are kind of overdone. I don't, to me, they're just the right bit of vintage on them. And I, I again, I just adore this piece. Up next is my Omega Seamaster 253180. Uh, I won't talk too much about this because I mentioned this one quite a bit. Uh, I fell in love with this watch because it's a Bond watch. You know, I grew up with Pierce Brosnan as my Bond. You know, Goldeneye, Tomorrow Never Dies, World Is Not Enough, Die Another Day. This is the watch. This is the watch that has all the gadgets on it. This is just, you know, a watch that I grew up with. You know, the laser and the landmines. It just, it's cool to have a Bond watch. Pierce Brosnan's my Bond. And I really love the aesthetic of this watch. I love that it has the wave dial. And to me, the blue on this watch just really, really works. So it's that romance of the movies. The style to me is perfect. And it's just a bit of my childhood. Up next is my Seiko Presage. This is a watch that at first sight, I absolutely hated it, but it's really grown on me. Um, as you guys have probably heard on the channel, I used to have a Seiko Sarb uh, 35 that I absolutely adored. My favorite Seiko I've actually ever owned, but uh, mine broke and I knew several people others that theirs broke as well. And I was looking for a replacement. And so I bought this um, as I'd heard nothing but good things about the cocktail time and other presages. Um, when I bought this guy, as you can see in my review, I was not impressed with the bracelet. I was not impressed with the fit and finish. I was not impressed with the plastic ring around the movement. Uh, and living with it every day, it's really grown on me. Taking that crappy bracelet off, putting it on a nice leather strap, the classic 50-ness appeal of this watch really speaks to me now. Um, it has a bit of a vintage Grand Seiko kind of feel about it. It's timeless. Uh, the dial is beautiful in the right sunlight. This is a watch I'm actually wearing quite a bit lately. It's a great kind of go-to dress watch, kind of almost like a beater dress watch for me, if that isn't too hard to say. Um, it's a piece that's really grown on me and I really enjoy it. Next up is the Seiko Sumo, one of my favorite dive watches I've ever owned. The contour on the back of this case, the way it fits your wrist, the blend of the polished and the brushed finishing on it, the simple bezel, the, the standard dial, the great luminescence. Love this watch. If anything, I actually probably like this as much, if not better, than my Omega Seamaster. And I like that Seamaster better than my old Rolex Submariner and my old Colt. So that means a lot. I adore this watch. It's about 45 mil or just under. It gets a lot of wrist time. This is kind of my great go-to, you know, kind of dive beater watch. And uh, I say beater because when I bought it, the dial was a little scratch. So it's, it's not a mint condition watch, but it gets used a lot and I really enjoy it. Up next though is of course my favorite Seiko I've ever owned and still, which is my Seiko Monster. This is my SRP 307J1. Uh, I still have it. Again, these things have gone up in value quite a bit, which kind of surprises me, but I love the brutalist aesthetic of it. It's something very unique. Uh, the die bezel turns well. I love how the die bezel is integrated into the case. I love uh, the sharp hands on it. Again, luminescence is spectacular. I love the bracelet. Again, Seiko, the high polish versus the brush finishes that they do on their watches to me is, is way up there. I love it. I love that this thing finally had an in-house movement that was hacking and hand winding with the 4R36. It keeps reasonable time. Uh, I work quite a bit. I love that it's unique. I love it's not your everyday dive watch. And again, it's a watch I plan on keeping the rest of my life. Uh, next up is my Hamilton Trent. I don't wear this particularly all that often, but this was something I kind of bought to appease myself for not buying a, a JLC Reverso. 
and uh, I actually really enjoy it. It's my only watch that is rectangular in shape. I don't wear it very often, but when I do wear it, it's something different and it's something a little unique. And so I enjoy it for that. It has an Eta 2824 in it. And uh, you know, so it's a good movement. It's got a decent finish on it. It runs really well. It's a high beat, it's 28,800 beats per hour. So it has a beautiful smooth sweep to it for a lower end watch. The leather strap is supple. The fold over clasp is very well done. And it's nice to have something a little bit smaller, a little bit more delicate and kind of squared in my collection. And I do enjoy wearing it from time to time. Moving on is a piece that I inherited. This is my Pierce chronograph from the 1940s. Uh, this video is going to be too long, so I really don't want to get too much into it here because we'll go on forever. The history of this chronograph is fascinating and I could go on forever just talking about the movement. Uh, this thing is a column wheel chronograph and it's just awesome for that. The movement's all in house. It's probably impossible to service these days. Uh, it's a smaller piece. It's about 36, 37 millimeters, somewhere in there for a chronograph. That's obviously very small. Um, I don't wear it very often, but when I do, I wear it on this original strap, which, well not original, but period correct strap, which I love. It's a very unique piece that you don't really see anybody else wearing. It's got a great patina to it as it's aged quite a bit and some of the plating on the case is worn off and it just has a very unique look to it that I definitely appreciate and enjoy wearing it time to time. Next up is my Vostok Komandersky. Uh, I bought this watch particularly because I'd heard a lot about it and was curious about it. I love uh, Russian naval history and Cold War history. I am a huge fan of old Russian submarines, Oscar IIs, Deltas, Typhoons. Again, I could go on for a long time, so I won't. Uh, but Cold War history is fascinating to me, and this watch in particular for Russian history is very cool to me. The, the case back, the way they did the seals on this case back, it was very, it was very special for its time. It's a very unique design, it's a very unique design, it's a very rugged design. In the hand, on the wrist, it doesn't feel like much, it feels like a cheap watch, but it doesn't, it belies the fact that this is actually a very reliable and a pretty rugged watch. And for what these things go for, it's a really cool value and it's a really cool piece of history. And I don't wear it very often, but when I do, I absolutely enjoy wearing it on my wrist. Up next is my 1899 Elgin. This is a watch that's been uh, in my family since it was new. And I love it so much so that some people were crazy enough to offer me a chance to create some merchandise for my channel. And my first thought was, I want to make stuff that has the movement of this watch on it. And I did this for myself, so I'm not, this isn't me trying to sell you guys on my merchandise. But I just, I really, I love the movement of this watch. The movement of this watch is just beautiful, made in the USA. The detailing on it is spectacular. Spectacular, so I went out and I, I created an iPhone case and I created a coffee cup of this movement because it was something I just thought it'd be really cool to put on stuff because I just, I love the vintage appeal of this watch. It's obviously not something I wear every day because it's a pocket watch but I absolutely adore it. I love the porcelain dial. I love the Arabic numerals. And this is like old school watch making at its best. When the watch ticks, it's, it's holding a heartbeat. It's, it's, you feel that essence of a bygone era. This watch has a lot of soul about it. And it's a watch that's gonna be with me for the rest of my life. And I'm very thankful to be a custodian of it. Uh, so much so that I've paid more to restore it than it's actually worth. And last two watches I want to talk about before this video gets way too long are my two G-Shocks, my G-Shock GST S100D. This is my solar G-Shock. Uh, I love this. I always wanted a G-Shock on the, the metal bracelet. And you know, this was one of those watches that uh, I finally got the chance to pick up at a good deal. Um, I like that it's something different. I kind of like that it's a big watch that I occasionally am in the mood to wear. Uh, I, and I love that it's solar, I don't have to worry about a battery in it, and it's just kind of a, a great watch to enjoy. It's got so many features that I really don't want to get into it here. Uh, I've covered them in the video about it, but I do wear this one quite a bit. It's a nice watch to go on a hike with or go hang out outdoors with. And the other G-Shock I have is my GD400. Uh, this is one of those watches that if I'm going to the swimming pool and I just want to go swimming, this is a watch I take with me. I jump in the water with it and I bang around with it and just kind of do whatever I feel like, and I don't have to worry about it, which is a very freeing thing to have with a watch like this. It's just my, my not have to worry about watch, which is, you know, a lot of freedom in that. So again, I just jump in the water, I go swimming with it, I beat the hell out of it, and uh, I never have to worry about damaging it or having to get it fixed, which is a great feeling. Um, and as you can see here, there's some other watches too that I just, I don't have time to get into. Um, there is a Tudor Submariner hidden in that picture. There's some watches people have given me, and there also is a swatch that belonged to uh, my significant other that passed away. So that's just something I'm holding on to. But, uh, not enough time to get into those. So anyway, guys, uh, there's a very quick run through of my collection. As you can see, 
I have more watches than I know what to do with. And frankly, looking at this now, I realized I've invested quite a bit of money into this stuff. Um, I'm tempted just to sell this stuff and buy another car. I don't know. I don't know if I made the good decisions or bad, but uh, I mean, they're all worth what I paid for them. So there's no real loss here. And I do enjoy them and I do rotate them quite a bit. And as I mentioned in my watch collecting tips video, you know, you want to get a lot of diversity in your collection. You want to be able to rotate through stuff and have different things. So as you can see, I have a lot of high end pieces. I have some very low end pieces and I have a lot of stuff in between and I have, you know, vintage, I have modern, I have dressy, I have abstract. I've very much tried to create a collection of kind of a piece for every mindset, every mood and every event. And so it works for me. So there you go, guys. There's a very fast run through of my way too large collection, in my opinion. Let me know what you guys think below in the comment section, please. If you haven't already, please give me a like and subscribe and also click the bell icon so you guys can see the new videos that are rolling out when they hit YouTube. As always, guys, it's a blessing to do this. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, for watching, for supporting me. It means the world, guys. Take care. I'll catch you guys real soon on the next video.